and a black woman get oppressed together? Yes. So why would you think that a white woman will want to liberate you from us? Have they ever done anything nice for us? Have they ever given us anything without something attached to it? Brother, have the white people ever gave us anything that didn't have something attached to it? Like for instance, what about food stamps? Or any type of public aid? What comes with that? It's some type of attachment where you couldn't have men in a household. What's your name, sis? Diana, but I got it all. Diana, hey, look, I got to I, I want to ask real quick. Do you know who Amelia Bloomer is? What about you? You know who Amelia Bloomer is? No. What about you, bro? Amelia Bloomer. So Amelia Bloomer was a white woman. She is the one who created pants. This is like in the 1850s. So upon us coming out of slavery, women were what? We wore what? Uh, we wore dresses. Yeah. You know, we wore dresses, where the women wore dresses in all four seasons. But you know what they had on up under their dresses? It's what, it's what you, we would call leggings today. You know what I'm saying? But there's a reason why Amelia Bloomer wanted women to wear pants, because she created something called the women's liberation. Because a lot of the, the United States was going into war and the men were going away. Yeah. So what, the women had to what, start working. Yeah. So Amelia Bloomer had this idea like we could do what men could do. But let me ask you this, did white women have the same struggle as, as our people? No. They didn't. So she solicited our women to follow along with the women's rights liberation. But didn't the black man and the black woman get oppressed together? Yes. So why would you think that a white woman would want to liberate you from us? Have they ever done anything nice for us? Have they ever given us anything without something attached to it? Brother, have the white people ever gave us anything that didn't have something attached to it? Like for instance, what about food stamps? Or any type of public aid, what comes with that? It's some type of attachment where you couldn't have men in the household. Right? So give me Job chapter 38. Read verse 2. Give me Job 38. I just want to just bring... What's your name, bro? Corey. Corey, come a little closer. I need you to hear this. This is the book of Job chapter 38 and verse 2. Bring it out. Who is... Verse 3. Gird up now thy loins like a man. So the Bible tells us to gird up our loins now like a man. Why? It's because the black man in America has been brought down very low. Wouldn't you say that, sis? Like right now, if you look across the street, a lot of our brothers have been standing out there just since, what, 6, 7 o'clock this morning, soliciting, selling loose cigarettes. Some of them selling drugs. A lot of our men ain't got jobs. They're not in the household raising their kids. So God is telling us to gird up our loins like a man. Read it again. Gird up. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. So God is telling, look, I need you to gird up your loins like a man, and then I'm going to give you some instructions. So these instructions that I'm going to give you is the, is the instructions on life, on how you're supposed to live. Do you know what happened? How, how did this happen to our people right here? Corey, how did this happen? Slavery. Slavery, yeah. How did this happen? Okay. May I ask that? Yeah. Okay. Now, mind you, every black we we really we originated in Africa, really right. from Africa. What happened was that this is what I was taught. First, we were now, mind you, we were captured in Africa right. by the Arabs. First, now after the Arabs had, uh, had called us, they mind. Now, this is what I was taught by my ex. He's into this. He's into the history. Period. Philosophy. The whole nine. After that, we were captured by uh, by Caucasians, the, uh, by the uh, Europeans. Now, here's a little secret. Not to me, Europeans actually got along with each other. They came together as one to find a way to capture us and enslave us and brainwash us. 
so Brain washes with what? With lies. Okay, let me show you what the Bible says about slavery. Because this our captivity, this history is documented in the Bible. Okay. This Bible is not a white man's book. This is a black man's book. This is black history. This is our history, and it has laws in it with prophecies. So what happened was we went into slavery, and the white man took our book and taught us religion. Right. He taught us religion. Read that real quick. Let me show you this. This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. What this is saying, this is Christ giving a prophecy, saying, look, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, meaning the Roman army, right. he's talking about 70 AD. He's talking about 70 AD. Okay. When this, this is when destruction is going to come. Read on. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. So he's saying, look, you Jews that are in Jerusalem, y'all flee into the mountains. Read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. So he's saying, look, flee. Don't come back. Why? Because Rome is about to destroy Jerusalem. So now you're starting to see us flee to further into Africa. Because where is Jerusalem? Where is Jerusalem at? The four corners of, of the world. So this is Africa, right? Yeah. So Jerusalem is like right up in here. Yeah. That's northeast Africa. So Jerusalem is in Northeast Africa. So he's telling us to flee into the mountains, right. flee into Africa, right. right? Read on. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. So he said, these are the days of vengeance. Those things that were written shall be revealed. What was written was, when you read in Deuteronomy 28, we were going to go into slavery by slave ships, and we were going to be sold to our enemies. So what you were saying was we were we were captured yeah. by the by the Arabs and we were sold what? To the white people. To the white and people. people were scattered yeah, throughout the four corners. Throughout the four corners of the earth. We're reading we're reading biblical history. Actually history in the Bible. Read. But woe unto them that are with the child. Okay, that's it. Give me Deuteronomy 28. So this right here, this is the reason why we are destroyed today. Are they teaching this in high school? No. Why they're not teaching this in high school, Corey? Too much like to keep it a secret, right? Because if we keep teaching our children this, we're going to make correlation to the Bible. And we're going to be like, dang, hold on. If the Bible's talking about slavery, then I must be the people in the book. I must be God's chosen people. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what God is pretty much saying is, look, you have children, right, sis? Dana, four? Corey, you got children? I, so when you got a household, right, do you give your children rules that they got to live by? Right? And what you tell them, look, if you do this, then you get you you you're gonna you're gonna get rewarded if you do what I tell you to do you're gonna get rewarded right. but if you disobey me what punished. you get punished right so this is what God is telling us in verse 15 read it again but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God so God is saying look it's going to come to pass if you don't listen to me my children read on to observe to do all his commandments to do everything that I tell you to do and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Meaning, I'm going to beat your butt and I'm going to put you on a long punishment. Right. So let's look at some of these punishments that we got put on because we didn't listen to God. We don't listen to him today. That's why we still going through what we go through today. Give me verse 46. Ver uh, yeah, give me 46. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. And for a wonder. So these these punishments are going to be upon us for a sign. So when you look at a sign, how do you know that we're on 35th and King Drive? The street. You see the street sign, right? Yeah. So this is to give you an indication of where you're at. So the Bible says these curses or these whoopings or these punishments are going to be upon you for a sign. Because what's your nationality? African American. African American. But the Bible calls you an Israelite. 
So these curses are going to be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So you can understand that you're not an African American. That's right. These, these curses were supposed to give you a remembrance of who you are in these last days. So that's what we're trying to convey to you today. Read verse 48 now. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So these are some of the punishments that he said it was going to happen to us. He said that we're going to have to serve our enemies. Corey, what's an enemy? Adversary. An adversary, right? So look, he said that we're going to have to serve our enemies for what? Shall serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So if you want food, Corey, where you got to go to get some food from? Okay. What? Like where? Just give the name. White castles. white castles. Who owns White Castles? The white. the white man. But what does God call them? Read it again. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies, enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. So God's saying you're going to have to serve your enemies for food. That's what this means. He said you're going to have to serve your enemies for food. Read on. And in thirst. And for water. So if you want something to drink, where you going to go get the uh, water from? The enemy. the enemy, right? You could go to your water faucet, right? <laughs> Turn it on. But something comes out probably the 1st or the 15th of the month, which is called a water bill, right? Who are you paying that water bill to? The enemy. The enemy. But don't water come, come from the sky? Freely, right? Yeah. But you still got to pay for it. So this is a punishment God said that was going to happen to the children of Israel. Read it again. Read. And in nakedness, and in want of all things. So if you want clothing, if you want anything, you got to go to who? The enemy. To who? The enemy. the enemy. Now look. So this gas station right here. Who owns this gas station? The Arabs. The Arabs, right? So who are they considered? The enemy. The enemy. The enemy, right? That, check this out. Read verse 43. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. So when we came out of Egypt, right, there was a lot of people that was with us. You had the East Indians with us. You had the Arabs with us. The white man was with us. They were regarded as strangers. So God said, look, these strangers are going to rise up above you. That's what you see today at this BP. Right, right. Because the Arabs were on this, right? Some, as popular, you know how some people say Africans sold Africans into slavery? Which technically is kind of true. But we are called Israelites. That's we are in the continent of Africa, but we're not regarded as actually Africans. Even they are in our neighborhoods. They are rising above us. When you go want to get some hair extensions, who own those places? Give me Psalms 83. Give me the book of Psalms chapter 83. Because sis, you was hitting some things right on the head. We went into slavery, and all this was a big plot, a big plan for us to be destroyed, not to know who we are today. Because when you look at the women, most of the women, what, run the households. The men are what, locked up way? They in jail cells. They out here on the streets just doing what they want to do. And what? That leaves the kids without a hedge, a hedge of protection. That's why they out here, what? Carjacking, shooting each other up. You got 13 year olds with, with handguns turning them into machine guns with something called a switch. All that was a plan to happen. That is documented in the Bible, too. Can I, can I read it to you real quick before you leave? Give me Psalms 83. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Read it out. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. Because look, in this oppression, we get tired of it. So this is a prayer, a prophecy, where uh, our forefather was telling God, look, man, please hurry up and do something about this. We're tired. When you look at us, we're tired of this oppression that we're going in, right? Aren't you tired of it? Yes, of course. Aren't you tired of our young men killing each other? Every time you look around, there's a rapper getting killed. So why is these things going on? But all this was a plan to help destroy our communities. And this is going to go into it. Read on. Verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. So our who? Our enemies make a tumult. So who are our enemies? Uh, the ones that's not black. 
you got you got the so-called white man, the Arab man, Chinese man, right? So the Bible says our what? Our enemies make a tumult. So our enemies make a tumult. The word tumult means an angry gathering. Or they it's called like a secret society where they go behind hidden doors and they discuss plans on how to keep us down. That's what this is talking about. I got a question though. Yes. Now, I understand what you're, uh, what you're implying, mm -hmm. but the question is, when do we stop hurting each other, keeping each other down? Great question. Give me um, Ezekiel 18. Great question, sis, because look, that's the whole purpose why we're out here. Because here's the thing. Everybody else got businesses. Half of us, uh, most of us don't even have not one. Right. So when you know what's the... Tell me more about that. Help me, me, uh, me understand that. See, sis, you're right. And the whole thing, that's why we're out here. We're out here first to wake our people up. To get them to realize, look, we are the people of the book. Because once we can grab your attention on that, now we can start digging into the meats and potatoes on how we can change. So the first thing we need to show our people is, is who they are according to the Bible, our nationality. Then we give them laws on how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. Because look, if I own a business, right? Say I own a business, a daycare, right? But if I am a pedophile, how are you going to have business, trust me, with your children? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that means the mindset of our people have to change, right? Yeah. So you ain't going to just do business with anybody. Of course. Because we've been destroyed. When this happened to us, we've been destroyed. The evidence is what you see right now. Right. When you go down the street, down to Indiana, it's the same thing. The further you go in our neighborhoods, the worse it gets. Right. When you go a block this way, it's the same thing. There's a lot of madness going on. So our minds got to get right first. Read that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because look, our enemies made a tumult to get our minds to be on this world. We want to worry about what type of cars we got. We want to talk about Kanye West, why he's wearing a White Lives Matter shirt. We want to talk about, hey, look, Jay-Z. We want to talk about Beyonce. We want to talk about the BET Awards. But none of that stuff has anything to do with God. So God says, look, be, be ye not conformed to this world. Read on. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we have to get our mindsets renewed. We have to get our mindsets changed. You see what I'm saying? So in order for that to happen, we have to what? Start keeping these laws. Because that's what got us into this. Right. A simple law as break, breaking the Sabbath got us into captivity. A simple law as what? Women wearing pants got us into captivity. A simple law as what? Me disrespecting you as a woman got us into slavery. So we have to learn how to what? Conduct ourselves with each other, conduct ourselves with God, then God can start changing. Then we can start having the houses and the, and, the, and the businesses and things of that nature. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 